the internet is amazing. And uh, so are you, as it turns out. You're looking good, by the way. A couple of years ago, I started down this path of trying to answer a question that my wife asked me. I made a video, uh, very poorly made, uh, I'll say. Good audio, I would say, but the structure of it, the video, everything was kind of subpar, I would say. But that video was answering the question how much money we were saving as a family by owning a Tesla. And it, uh, it, kind of went nuts on the internet uh, now has over a million views i think it had two hundred thousand views in the first week prior to that i think my best video had maybe ten thousand views and at the time i had 800 subscribers i even have this funny old video where i was pleading with everyone to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of the year this was november of 2016 almost almost uh two years exactly two years in a week off from today and uh and this this really sparked the whole idea that when I can take how I look at the world by looking at it through the lens of data and analyzing what I find and sharing that in something that is of interest to you guys, there is kind of a secret sauce there. There's kind of a magic that happens. Um, so in January of 2017, I officially changed the channel name to Teslanomics because it was combining kind of two of my favorite things, economics, which I'm a huge economics nut, and Tesla. At the time, I had owned mine for about a year and was just completely floored with the company, what they were doing. Um, and I think part of that is because Prior to owning a Tesla and riding in one, I had this very cynical kind of down view on cars, uh, mostly because these little devices that we carry around in our pocket, like this one here, had so much power and so much amazing things that it can do. Meanwhile, you had this big car that was seemingly lifeless. It had none of the capabilities of my phone until I got into a Tesla and I realized it's not just that these cars are electric. It's not really the thing. Like, yes, that is amazing, but they are actually making tech-friendly cars. And for someone like myself that, you know, built my first computer when I was 15 years old and has been working in the tech field since 1998, I was in love. It really was love at, at first drive, at kind of that, that Tesla grin or that Tesla smile that you get. Um, and that was when my friend Aaron Sconard, the founder of Pluralsight, a company I used to work for, took me in a ride on his to check out the new office that with that uh, they were building out that we you know I ended up working at um, in Farmington, Utah. Now, that's a little bit uh, backstory on the whole concept behind this channel and and how we got here. But along this way, I really fell in love with being a content creator, being a YouTuber, as you might say. And the idea was uh, that. I'm doing something of value. Um, using my superpower, which is looking at the world th th through the lens of data and analyzing these things, and sharing that with you guys in a way that helps you make better decisions about which option maybe you wanna get for your next electric car. Now, through this process, I was able to meet some incredible people, and I have to give a big thanks to all the people that, that really uh, you know, kept me going here. Um, the first and foremost, probably Kim from Like Tesla. Uh, they, uh, her and her husband invited me to the uh, factory tour and the uh, lunch with Franz. Uh, I think it was June or July of 2016. And I was very early on in my journey. Things had been growing. I was making content every single week. I was really trying to learn everything I could about YouTube and just kind of dig deeper and become uh, a better creator and provide more value to you guys each and every week. And, and they, by inviting me there, really opened up my eyes. I got to see firsthand what the factory was like. I got to hear Fran speak about stuff. I got to be introduced to so many different people uh, in the Tesla community. And it was, it was really, you know, I felt like I was home. I felt like I was doing something that, um, that was valuable and, and, and really moving the needle in the world. Um, fast forward, you know, I had some other fun times um, at the Model 3 handover event. Uh, we, you know, I got to meet um, Dan from What's Inside and Austin Evans um, and a few other people at the time that I just had kind of been been watching online but getting to chat with those guys a little bit about youtube kind of how this lifestyle is and all that really kind of kept the interest going and making me want to even create more videos 
Uh, fast forward, me and Dan actually became pretty good friends. Um, we we went to the se- semi uh, uh, slash roadster unveiling event together, and you know he kind of became a mentor to me. So. Dan has been a tremendous help, um, and through him, I've met so many other great people in the YouTube community, and it's just really amazing to kind of be a part of this. And I, I, I just want to give a you know big thanks to him, as long as you know, as well as all the other Tesla tubers out there, uh, folks like Rich uh, and Ryan McCaffrey, even though he's not a, a YouTuber uh, with his podcast, and Trevor from Model Three Owners Club, and now you know with Zach and Jesse, um, and James Cook, uh, who I believe just started making videos again. Um, And then, of course, you know, some of the old school guys like Bjorn, who's, I think, the first one to really start making Tesla videos and do kind of show the world what these cars are capable of. So it's been an amazing journey, you know, and along the process, I was able to uh, convince you guys to donate money to raise to buy Elon a couch, uh, which turned out to be a much better thing where I did get to deliver him a couch, didn't get to meet him, unfortunately. Uh, but had a good experience. And also we raised uh, over $18,000 for, for charity. So it's just super fun and, 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 and super, you know, amazing. And of course, one of the big things was earning the roadsters and that was cool. But also during that process of earning the roadsters, I've referred enough people, enough of you guys that have bought Teslas using my code that we've now saved almost 1 million pounds of CO2 from entering the atmosphere. Literally, me making these videos in my studio here and previously my studio at home um, and all my you know failed attempts at vlogging have led to almost 1 million pounds of CO2 from not entering the atmosphere. That, that, that is the biggest metric of all to me. You know, and now I've crossed 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is nuts because that's like more than, you know, even a large football stadium can handle. Just to think, this is like, you know, me here with the camera, but you watching online is like me being at a a, a football stadium completely packed, people overflowing, trying to get in just to hear me talk about data and and Tesla and electric cars and everything else. It's just mind blowing to me. So thank you to everyone that has been with me on this journey and that helps spread the message. And, you know, whether I've had direct contact with you or not on Twitter, Facebook, et cetera, just Thank you all, because I think it is such a fun job, and I am super grateful that I get to do this. Uh, it is something I'm really passionate about. I really love doing. Um, so, so I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> obviously, now this wouldn't be a a, a, a Ben Sullen's video uh, if I didn't talk about data a little bit. So, I wanted to just kind of break down some of these numbers in a little bit deeper context because things like subscribers or view count or you know some of these other numbers that people throw out there are in the data world what we would probably call vanity metrics and so i wanted to just kind of peek behind the curtain a little bit show you how i tend to look at the metrics on youtube for my channel and kind of tell you why so let's dive in right now and see what kind of data i'm looking at on a weekly basis so here's the dashboard that i built using google data studio for my own youtube uh, channel and analysis and the, the idea here i would love to do this in tableau which is the software i typically use but there's not really a great connection been working on that so google has this thing called data studio which if you guys are looking to do fun stuff like this it's free just you know, I think it's datastudio.google.com or whatever. And you can just kind of connect it to AdWords, Google AdSense, uh, any of those kind of things and just create your own visualizations. It's super easy. So uh, here's what I have. So I have kind of my my uh, top level metrics on the top left, the top level metrics on the top left. Uh, and so you have views. This is for the past uh, 28 days, I believe it is. And it shows you the change. And I think this is really the key thing is this percent change. Now, I did make a change recently on the channel where I'm no longer publishing the highlight videos from the live show during the week and so that has significantly dropped i was around a million views a month and that after i removed those because as you guys mentioned you know you were kind of getting bombarded with content that you had already seen um so you know those are no not included in here also now that those are on a separate channel uh i haven't included those in here as uh, yet as either so i might be able to do that in the future but but we'll see then i have watch time and this is really so views is one thing right but if you have a, an hour-long video versus a, a five-minute video 
uh, you you know, somebody watches 30 minutes of one and maybe all five minutes of another, that one that is for 30 minutes actually kind of counts more in YouTube's eyes, as far as I understand. And so watch time is a much clearer, better metric of how kind of engaged people are in your content. And in terms of YouTube's perspective, how much value you're bringing to them, because of course, their goal is to run ads on videos. And so the more time people are watching, the more ads they can run. So it's kind of what's going on here. But you can see that we have 4.9 million uh, hours of watch time in the past uh, 28 days. And uh, that's up 25%. Now, a large part of that, I'm guessing, is from the earnings call. Um, plus, you know, I've just been doing a, a lot longer uh, of the live streams. Now, and you have net subscribers. This is how many people have subscribed in that same same time period. Now, this is a net number, so I subtract out anybody that's unsubscribed. Um, and so this is up 7.4% over the previous period. So, you know, that's, that's all good. Um, then I have uh, engagement. Now, engagement is a number that I think it really tells kind of how uh, good a piece of content is. And I measure or I calculate this metric, uh, this total engagement number, which you can see in this chart here, as likes, dislikes, comments, shares, and clicks on anything in the video. So like the cards that pop up or the end screen, which has maybe links to things and other videos, et cetera. All of those are what I consider engagement. It's basically you, uh, when you're watching a video, doing, taking some action. Um, and so this is kind of how I measure that. And so you can see that this is going, you know, spiking up. And this is, I think, a, a weekly number here. And the interesting thing again is, yeah, we had the earnings call last week. So tons of comments and just huge amounts of volume in that. So you'll see this kind of fluctuate uh, uh, over time but you know up and to the right always kind of is good then you have the the net subscriber growth so this is a, a, a different this is a daily metric here and you can see essentially how many subscribers after uh, subscribes and unsubscribes um, are, are coming into the channel and you have these little kind of spikes here and so you can go back and, and look at some of these and compare them to where the videos are but again it's not just total subscribers it's the growth of the subscribers so that I think is, is, a, is a much more interesting number because if that growth rate is increasing then you know you you can say that you're doing something good you know the overall number uh it becomes less significant right over time so it's more about that percentage growth um and so i actually am not able to calculate calculate that officially here um so this is the best you can do because google data studio is kind of limited um then what you have is i essentially look at the details so uh the top 10 videos and um, I believe these are ranked by uh, views right now. But again, see, it, here's an example. So Tesla's Road to Profitability, the video I did that was posted just immediately following the earnings call, um, that has 49,000.4 views. Great. Uh, but, you know, if you look at the watch time, it's 6.63, uh, which I believe is hours. And then you have down here the earnings call, which is, you know, hour and a half, two hour long uh, broadcast with 46,000 views. So fewer views, but, uh, you know, a triple, almost quadruple the amount of watch time. So that's kind of the difference in why I think watch time is is a much more interesting metric. Then you have total engagement. See, so you can also kind of kind of do that there. Now, again, this is where if you look, that earnings call won five. Point three thousand, you know, again, almost, you know, approaching double of the engagement of the, the road to profitability video. So this is kind of nice just to see kind of which videos are generating the most engagement, which ones are generating the most watch time. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I like to look at this each week and just kind of get a sense of, uh, of, you know, how things are going overall. Um, and, and, you know, that gives me just a deeper, deeper view into really the health of the channel. So then, uh, we have the, the YouTube analytics themselves and this, these provide another kind of interesting take on it because this is the new stuff that YouTube just recently released. And here, um, I just want to go through this with you. Um, and here's where I also think that the uh, subscriber count is, is a little bit, uh, maybe misleading or confused because if you look, we have unique viewers here. So what that means is that, you know, now I'm at 100,000 subscribers. However, in the past 28 days, we've had uh, almost 300,000 viewers. So 300,000 people almost have watched uh, a video. So your subscriber count isn't necessarily uh, directly, you know, in line with this. Um, and if you, you know, expand this out back to when I was getting, uh, you know, uh, one of those, uh, the highlight videos and stuff, you can see we're at the past 90 days, we're at almost 876 uh, or 876,000 
viewers. So in the world of SaaS businesses, which is the term they use, which I'm not in love with, but um, something like a Netflix or a Facebook or one of those, this is the number that businesses really care about. This is the number that they look at and they typically report to Wall Street and they would do it um, probably on a 28 day basis or however they define a month because this would be your monthly active users. So um, this number is not available in the data studio yet. So that's why I don't have it ported over and I have to come here for that. So. The way this works out is this kind of funnel, and, and I really love how, how they've done this here. You have your, your impressions, so 5.9 million impressions. That's how many times somebody has seen my face on a thumbnail uh, in the past uh, 20, looks like 27 days here. Then 66.2% of that was from recommending from Google. I'm sorry, from YouTube recommending my content. So again, that doesn't mean those are non-subscribers. These are these are impressions that are happening on people that are not subscribed to the channel. 4.7 percent of them have clicked uh, through. That's the click-through rate, and that generates uh, 528,000, uh, almost 530,000 views there. Um, and then you can see that we, an, an average 31% uh, average view duration. Again, my videos are very long, so that's actually not bad, um, which equates to a nine minutes and 27 seconds watch time. So overall, that's five million minutes of watch time in the past 27 days. You know, you can break it down by categories, where it's coming from, the searches and all these kind of things. But to me, this unique viewers number is super important. And then this little funnel here showing you the percent that YouTube is recommending and the click through rate. Both of those are super important there. Um, they also have some other charts here. You can see the watch time, the view duration, um, the unique viewers, the average views per viewer doesn't really change much. But again, it's kind of interesting to see you know how many people are actually watching stuff and then this is a chart i used to pay a lot of attention to this was the watch time from subscribers didn't know it was going to go full screen okay uh, and so um 76 of the views in the last 28 days are from non-subscribers so again this is where those those metrics uh you know they're kind of surface level in, in some ways and you want to dig deeper if you really want to understand what's going on um so that that's kind of how i i look at um all these things here so when it comes down to it i am just super stoked that you guys are here with me on this journey as we try to understand our transition from uh, more fossil fuel based uh, forms of transportation into more sustainable ones mostly electric that is uh, as for what's next, I'm gonna keep doing what I do here on the channel, looking, applying my knowledge uh, of data and analytics to the world of electrification and transportation. Uh, I may start to try to branch out into some of the other electric cars that are coming out because I am pretty stoked on a lot of them. Um, well, I'll say a few of them are I'm really interested in. And so instead of just focusing 100% on Tesla, I do wanna break out and kind of see what else is going on in the uh, electric car space. So of course, I've talked about it a lot already, um, but typically it's always been in the context of like this car compared to a Tesla. And so you'll start to see more and more stuff about like the new EVs coming out, what I think of them, and, you know, and hopefully I'll be able to, to go see some of them firsthand. I haven't really had too many of those uh, chances yet, but um, I, I will be uh, pushing forward on that going into next year. So again, guys, uh, thank you for joining me. I'm just floored and, and really kind of humbled by this, uh, th this marker, but it's, it's it's, uh, it's just the beginning, honestly. We're, we're as, as I've been kind of saying uh, tongue in cheek with my friends, we, we've hit 0.1 million subscribers. Woohoo! Um, and so I hope you guys like this video. If you're new here and you hung out, man, you, you should definitely click that subscribe button and help push up the, these, these numbers that you just saw there. In any event, uh, don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you guys back here in the next one.